Okay, gang, um, let's do number 39. Just sharpen that a little bit. Okay, let's do number 39. So the first thing I did was I brought this up, and um, I also noted that you can't divide by zero. So this has a domain restriction here. This For this function, x cannot be zero. All right, down here I'm doing the derivative. So derivative of this is two, derivative of this part is negative x and negative two. I then took this because it's negative and I flipped it down. So I did two minus one over x squared. The next thing I did was I got an LCD. So this two, I put it as two over one and I multiplied up down by x squared so that I can get this. All right, after this, I then looked for critical numbers. Now. Uh, if you set the numerator equal to zero, you get um, plus or minus radical one half, which is equivalent to plus or minus 0.7. Now, I didn't rationalize until the very, very end of this problem. So if you want it rationalized, this would be equivalent to uh, radical two over two. Okay, so this and this is the same. I didn't do, I left it like this. Uh, now, in terms of the denominator, you... We want to set the denominator equal to zero, but that would mean that x is zero, and we can't let x equal to zero because that's a domain restriction. Specifically, it's a vertical asymptote. That's why it's a domain restriction. So when I wrote out my critical number, I couldn't put zero here because we can't use zero. Zero, there is no zero on the function. There's a vertical asymptote there. There's no graph. All right, so then um, I put up my critical number here and here the plus or minus uh, radical one half. Again, you could write it like that if you prefer. And you also, real important, you also have to put in your domain restriction. Now, if you note, I put a big red X because the domain restriction can never ever be a max or a min. All right, so I just sometimes forget when I'm, like when I took calculus, I did this because when you're doing all the work for the problem, you can sometimes forget that you can't use that at the end. Like, you know, 15 minutes later, you might forget that you actually can't use that value as an extrema. So I would put like a big X here for myself. I just make that suggestion to you if it's helpful. Okay, then the next thing I did is I picked some test values around the critical number and the domain restriction. So Negative radical one half is about negative 0.7. So something to the left of that, I picked negative two. Something in between here and here, I picked negative a half, right? Because this, or 0.5 if you want negative 0.5. Okay, between here and here, I picked positive a half. And greater than this, I picked a two. So those were my test values. Remember, the test values have to go into the first derivative. So like when I plugged in negative two, so when I put this one in here, so negative two squared is four, four times two is eight, eight minus one is seven. What matters is that it was a positive seven. And then since the denominator squared, I notated that this is always positive. So a positive over a positive is positive. So this is increasing. So since the denominator is always positive, I'm not gonna waste my brain energy ever plugging into that because it's always positive no matter what I put in. So I'm just gonna focus on the numerator. And then I plugged in negative a half for this interval. So negative a half squared is positive a quarter. A quarter times two is a half. A half minus one is negative one half. So that's giving me a negative over a positive, which overall that fraction would be negative. So that's why you see me doing a negative here. That means the function's coming down because the derivative is negative. All right, then I plugged in positive a half. So positive a half squared is a quarter. A quarter times two is a half. A half minus one is negative a half. So the numerator is negative. The bottom is always positive. So overall, this fraction is negative. So the function is decreasing. The derivative is negative. And then I picked two for the very last part as a test value. Two squared is four times two is eight. Eight minus one is seven. That's positive. Positive over a positive is overall positive. The function's increasing here. Derivative is positive. All right, and then I just wrote it out. So it's positive over here. And again, I didn't rationalize. So if you rationalize, that'll look nicer than what I wrote. Um, so this goes from negative infinity to negative radical one half. 
and over here it's positive, so radical one half to infinity. And then here is the negative parts. Don't include zero because there is no graph here. That's why zero is cut out. You just write this segment, negative radical one half to zero. And then this other segment, zero to positive radical one half. All right. Now there's two ways then to do the set. You So, oh, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right. So that's part A and B. Then you have to do the first derivative test. So remember, to do the first derivative test, you have to find a critical number, and you have to look at the behavior change of the derivative around the critical number. So here's my critical number. To the left, the derivative is increasing. To the right, the derivative is decreasing. So the function goes up, and then it goes down, so that's a maximum. So I noted that I had a maximum here at negative radical one-half, and, and then later on, I was going to find the y. I did the same thing over here. I found my critical number. To the left, the derivative is negative, which means the function goes down. To the right, the derivative is positive, which means the function goes up. So overall, I have a relative minimum. So I have a relative minimum at that value of positive radical one half. Again, don't do anything here at the domain restriction because that is not a coordinate. That's a vertical asymptote. Okay, so then once you find your x values for your max and min, you have to plug that back into the original. Now, I um, did this in my calculator. I used point, negative 0.7, and I plugged it in here, and I got the calculator answer for negative 0.7 and positive 0.7. But um, I figured some of you actually might want to see the, um, the algebra. So... I guess it's more arithmetic, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, so if you rationalize radical one-half, you get that. And if you plug it back into the original function, I put it, the original function being this, I put it in the rationalized form for the first x. I put it in um, here, this form, this 1 over radical 2 for the second one, just because it was going to flip up. It was going to flip up. So... This and this cancel to do this. This flips up to do this. So then you have two radical two. So another way to write the max and min, if you wanted to write it, like you did all your radicals and you did a real nice, beautiful job, your max and min would look like this instead of my um, unrationalized and decimal answers, okay? And I also just wanted to note that the max can be below the min. So an example of this, and you may remember this from pre-calc, an example of this would be when you have like a shape like this, right? Because this would be a max right here. You guys remember your slant asymptote from pre-calc? So if you have a slant asymptote, your max is actually right here below your min, which is right here. So it is possible. So don't look at the numbers and be like, oh, that can't be right. How can my max be smaller than my min? It's because your vertical asymptote is cutting this into two separate pictures. And this picture, the max is lower than the min, okay? All right, gang, that's it. Hope that helped. Catch you.